Greetings, everyone. I want to welcome you again to my YouTube channel. I still remember how to set up a video on my channel. Today, we'll be looking at, uh, at uh, a very important topic, and uh, the topic is enter uh, uh, over Zotica under Photoshop. Of course, we've been talking about Photoshop in the previous classes. So, what to look at this part as I call enter over Zotica. Now, uh, the first thing I want you to know about enter uh, over Zotica is that it's a typical amoeba, and because an amoeba, of course, it uses to the phobia. For the purpose of movement or locomotion. Now, the second thing I want to know, I want you to know about this parasite is that the first thing we discovered is, is a, a German pathologist that is called Fred, Friedrich Loos, Friedrich Loos, and in the year 1875, 1875, this was the year that he discovered this parasite. Then, of course, this parasite causes. Uh, uh, some uh, gastrointestinal symptoms uh, such as diarrhea and uh, abdominal pain and uh, it also causes liver abscess so uh, some of these things we'll look at it uh, in, the, in the pathological aspect of this topic now the main emphasis for this particular class is to look at the life cycle of this parasite called entamoeba isolitica and don't forget that we have other species of this genus we have entamoeba hatmani, we have entamoeba poleki, we have entamoeba gingivalis, but these are mainly common stars. They are not uh, parasitic, uh, so to say, compared to this particular one called entamoeba solitica. Now, the life cycle of this parasite, as you can see in this sketch, it begins by the ingestion of uh, the infective cyst. This cyst is being carried by the mechanical vector, which is fly. Of course, we know we have. Uh, the biological vectors will have the mechanical vectors. Because of time, I may not go into explaining the details, the difference between these two types of vectors. But the mechanical vector is usually a uh, musical domestica, that is the house fly. Now, by the time someone who is suffering from this uh, disease, which is called amoebiasis, you know, defecates in the environment, the fly comes to perch on the feces. And once it's not perched on the feces, now it may perch on the food or, you know, for another person. And expose food, and once the person tasting the food or the water, then the person that ingested the cyst of this parasite called entamoeba solitica. And once the cyst is ingested, now of course, the next thing that happens is excitation. Now, there are two terms I want you to understand. We we'll have what they call the encystation, and we we'll have what they call excitation. Now, the cyst is like a shell that covers the parasite. Now, by the time the parasite or the cyst of the parasite gets into the intention of man, then the first thing that happens is excitation. So it means that the cyst breaks. Now, this is actually due to some enzymatic uh, actions on the cyst, which I will also not want to go into now in detail because of uh, limited time. Now, the cyst now breaks. And once it breaks, that is what we call excitation. Excitation, it breaks. And once it breaks, the amoeba comes into the intestine, the large intestine in this case. In the case of Gadel and Plea, the excitation occurs in the small intestine. But for this entamoeba solitica, it occurs in the large intestine. And once excitation occurs, the next thing you see that you see the amoeba in the large intestine. And this amoeba in the large intestine you know, releases a, a kind of hydrolytic enzyme uh, that is called histolysin. histolysin. Now, this enzyme, now, Helps to now corrode the wall of uh, the mucosa or the intestine. When we say mucosa, I'm talking about the foremost layer of uh, this, the, the large intestine. Once it corrodes it, you know, it causes injury or what we call ulceration in the, in, the, in the large intestine. And uh, this can give room to uh, uh, injury or what we call secondary bacteria infection. So now, by the time it is not causing this harm, then the next thing is that the the amoeba, you know, you know, divides its nucleus or there's a division of the nucleus to form four different nuclei. And that is when we now say that this amoeba is quadrinucleate, that means it has four different nuclei. And this is when it becomes infected. So at this stage now, it's about leaving the body. And it's leaving the body as you know, at a stage that's called the infective stage. So you see the cyst is passed out with the feces into the external environment. And once it gets to the external environment, we now have cysts on food or vegetable, like I, I, 
I either explain it. So the person who is suffering from allergies, the person who defecates in, in, in an environment, now flies can perch on the feces and also perch on somebody's food or maybe water or vegetable, as the case may be. And when the person ingests the disease, then the circle continues. Then coming to pathology, I've already explained. One of the things that this parasite does is that it causes a liver abscess. You know, it can go through the uh, uh, the, 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 the blood the vessels and uh, you know go and inflame the liver, resulting to inflammation of the liver or liver abscess. Then of course it can result to gastrointestinal symptoms such as uh, abdominal pain, you have diarrhea. And uh, I also mentioned a secondary bacterial infection. You know it can result to the infection of bacteria within that particular space. That is what we call secondary bacteria infection. Now, how do you treat these parasites? Use antibiotics, tetracycline, as simple as that. So when you use it, then of course it, it, it helps to, to, to weed off or to kill the parasites. That is for pathology and the treatment. Then diagnosis, how do you diagnose this? Then it's a very simple thing, get the person's physics. But in the medical term, we say demonstration, of uh, the presence of infectious disease in fetal sample. So you get the fetal sample, then uh, you add the normal reagents you are supposed to add, then of course you need a microscope to view to see if it is actually the disease of enter member physiotica. You know, those uh, students in a, a, a medical laboratory, we you know, have to go deeper into this uh, diagnosis. Then prevention and control. How do you prevent amoebiasis? It's very simple to prevent amoebiasis. Cover your food, cover your food, so that you don't allow flies to, to perch on them. Then don't use or stop using untreated human feces or fertilizer because it can contaminate the vegetables. And once you take in the vegetables, of course, you are taking in the, the, the seeds of these parasites. And wash your hand after going to the toilet, yes. Wash your hand after going to the toilet. In fact, improve on your personal hygiene. So these are some of the steps you need to take if you want to prevent the spread of this parasite called Entamoebiasis. Sotica. Don't forget that uh, the name of the disease it causes is amoebiasis. So I'm going to stop here. Subsequently, we're going to be looking at other parasites like I mentioned. We have Giada Lambia. We have Trachomonas vaginalis, we have uh, Trachomasoma brucei gambiens, Trachomasoma brucei odesiens. There are so many of them, Palantidum coli, then uh, so many of them, so many of them. That is for protozoa. Then coming to platyhemites, we have Fasciola schistostoma, then Nematoda, we have Ascaris rubricordis, Esalosoma dominant Nekata americanus, and so on and so forth. So in the first one video, we're going to look at that. I remember, I'm going to say Dr. Ujong Ojona. See you in the next class. Thank you.